questions. Um, I think what I wanted to discuss quickly, briefly with, uh, with your folks is your thoughts on how to move things forward with, you know, whatever scope we're trying to achieve with the, the working group proposal, notably the, the white paper is something that I'm interested in, but beyond that, how to, you know, give sense to the chaos engineering effort we're trying to convey. I, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's quite crystal clear that it's been a bit quiet, but it's also a very new subject, uh, except for those people who've been doing that, like <laughs> maybe like you folks, or well, Michael, anyway. Um, but at the same time, I think it's um, exciting because it, it means we can actually engage in setting up the ground for, you know, for the rest of the industry when they catch up. Um, but I was wondering, you know, uh, well, we lost Michael. He will probably be back. Uh, yeah, so I just was wondering your thoughts on that and, you know, where, where your man's at on, on that subject. So is it possible? So I think that white paper is obviously the way forward. Getting right. more eyes on it is important. Um, maybe, maybe it's worthwhile. I guess the core contributor, like we send an email out to all the core contributors saying, Hey, look, we want to try and finalize this shortly. Um, we put some effort in the next couple of weeks to get it into a more finished state. And then um, CNCF can tweet out and publicize a little bit more widely that we're trying to sort of finalize this. Please feel free to come to this meeting. And then we'll sort of put it into, um, I can't remember what they call it in the IETF, but like a, uh, like pre or uh, close closing call or something. Yeah, uh, where you sort of make final comments and you've got like a deadline to make changes. I think that's fair. I think we need to, that little push for the next, you know, two or three weeks, whatever it takes, but um, certainly a, a sh fairly short deadline for uh, for people to make their mind whether or not they are ready to contribute, if they have anything to contribute. Um, I wouldn't want uh, the, the white paper to reflect only a, uh, just either my mind or, you know, a few other people, um, um, it would be wrong, uh, you know, on, on that, on that, on that note. Uh, at the same time, I'm wondering, I'm, all the commits I've made, I'm really wondering if I'm actually on the right track anyway. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm quite looking forward to commands, feedback, not necessarily on my, uh, you know, grammar style, <laughs> but more on the, if, if we've got the right notes, uh, because we don't want to be normative, it's, it's fairly tricky to be to be fair because we don't we don't want to look like this is the only way and you know that's the standard way of doing kill centering. At the same time, we can't be too high level and just be basically useless as a white paper. So I I have found I'm not you know versed in, in writing white papers. So certainly I would welcome feedback from the community on that front. Um, definitely. So I like the the you know the, the battle plan of saying buckle up and, and if you could actually make some time to read it and, and make comments, that would be beautiful. <laughs> hey, this is uh, Deepak here. Uh, Hello. From, hey, from Capital One. So I know like I've been trying to you know, contribute. I, I sent a message to Chris uh, and then got the details. So I, I will uh, make time this week and uh, hopefully, you know, before this uh, September long weekend here, um, I will, um, add my uh, contributions there and then probably we can do a review uh, in the next meet. Thank you very much, Back. I think it's it's very welcome that we have different voices uh, because there are various, I wouldn't say flavors, but certainly different takes on, you know, what chaos engineering is all about. So, um, it couldn't be just Netflix way or my way or, you know, or LinkedIn way. It, it needs to be to reflect the diversity of the landscape, definitely. So the more people contributing, the the stronger it will be. So it's good. It's welcome, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so you know, at Capital One, we do practice chaos engineering seriously. Like I'm from the uh, identity team. So uh, in various departments, we do at different levels. But um, you know, look, we try to do all internal presentations about resiliency and chaos engineering. But right now, I'm working with my communications group to see you know like what can be shared. So I'll also come forth with. Uh, some presentations going forward. 
it's pretty good. Uh, I I did submit a proposal for the Cube KubeCon uh, that's happening in December. I guess last time Chris was mentioning that. Mm -hmm. uh, I did submit a proposal, so waiting for the results. Well, that's very cool. Um, aside from that, I think I wonder uh, if there should if there is a, a, a value in trying to reach out either through examples, maybe we've, we've done some examples on, online on this, on this meeting and they've been recorded. So that's great. But I wonder how far we could go with, and I, I don't know what would be the shape, but um, more success stories like you, 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 know, you folks have, have told, uh, but maybe written because I think the white paper could, could welcome uh, alongside it some some yeah some some success stories examples like like I wouldn't say blog posts but similar to that just to enrich the thing not just say well this is you know just theory it needs to be shown that it's practiced and 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 you know and used elsewhere. <laughs> so, I've actually got a blog post coming out on InfoQ. That's pretty good. Like sometime soon. They haven't told me exactly when. That actually details like some of our success stories. Brilliant. I think we we do need that kind of thing. Like uh, you know, uh, the, the Grammy folks have done quite good job of of summarizing, you know, um, uh, chaos centering and telling the story. And and we need more things like that. We've tried as well with Chaos IQ, but maybe maybe we, we could suggest, and I will suggest to to the to the Slack channel whether or not we could you know create like a repositories of a page somewhere saying you know just listing those. Those those uh, those articles that would be easy for people to to, to look through. Uh, and one last thing, I want well, one last thing for me anyway. Um, for me, I wonder: <clears throat> is there a value in reaching out to other working groups and perhaps having a discussion with them? Like I'm thinking serverless because it's hot and you know, and it, it's fitting in my opinion. But could be else, anything else like storage, obviously, or otherwise. Uh, saying, well, could we? Could we try to come out, come up with a story of of chaos engineering in serverless or chaos engineering, you know, in anywhere else? Just as an example of this, this can be applied, and this is how it could look uh, with that, you know, with other working groups. I wouldn't want the chaos engineering to live isolated or in silo, basically. Uh, but maybe it's too soon. Just, just you know, pushing the idea out there. Um, I think it's at least worthwhile reaching out. Like, there's nothing to lose. Mm. Uh, Colton did mention in the Gremlin Chaos Engineering Slack that they are working on serverless features as well. Sweet. Mm. Um, so there is at least some thinking there, um, but I don't have any more information than that. Yeah. I think it, it's just that, um, uh, it, to me, I, and anyway, it's, this is a personal opinion, obviously. To me, Chaos Engineering is more a federating uh, kind of practice and uh, practice practice on its own that lives in, in its own world. So I like, I like the idea to say, well, chaos engineering is not just yeah, a silo that you practice, you know, aside from anything else, it's really more federating than that. But, um, and I'd like to demonstrate that. So if the group feel like it's, it goes beyond the, the need of this working group, I'll probably take that on my own and just do a blog post of something like that. <laughs> So that's where I stand. Um, hopefully, that will pick up. But you know, you know, we all have you know jobs and and holidays and stuff like that. So it's a slow it's a slow process. But having you know participated to um, uh, IETF uh, working groups in the past, I know, I know it's slow anyway. <laughs> I've definitely heard that. I haven't gone to uh, IETF yet. <laughs> yeah, and back in the days, it was mostly you know on, on emails. So you, you needed patience to read long emails and just make sense of what it is. So <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, right. Um, I don't want to keep the the meeting short. You know, much longer. Um, I don't know. Maybe just just uh, quickly. I have you folks been working on something interesting on 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 chaos engineering inside your companies or elsewhere, or whatever. Just out of curiosity for myself. Um, I know for us, um, we've been focusing most of our attention on a Chrome extension where from the Chrome extension we can enable and disable specific backends and see what happens when the page loads. That's most of our focus at the moment. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Hi, this is Aditya from Under Armour. 
Hello. Uh, yeah, we, we have been using Gremlin and we are starting out on game days. So oh, uh, we did one this past week, uh, which uh, we will probably post a blog post on. Uh, so this is in collaboration with Gremlin. So we're starting out with microservices and, and some of the Kubernetes stack and trying to game day those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be blogging out about these things as well. That's what's going on at, uh, at Under Armour. Yeah, if you're on the Slack on the Slack channel, do do push the your article on there so that we can read it. I'd be interested. Sure, absolutely. Thanks. What about you, Deepak? Have you have you been you know busy busy on on chaos engineering? <laughs> yes, um, we have had uh, you know few game days uh, done, and we actually have recurring uh, chaos tests running in our production. Mm -hmm. uh, we st we started off with simple scenarios like you know uh, like EC two stops. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've had a bunch of learnings with alert tunings and you know making sure our playbooks are uh, exercised well and all that. So um, yeah, we, we've been on the way and we use our internal product. And you know my team has been contributing to some new scenarios as well, like you know you know creating network disruptions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's my experience so far. But you know like we are thinking of chaos engineering as a way of uh, you know making sure the resiliency design we put in works. So it's hand in hand, right? So, uh, so that's, that's the practice we are getting at to improve the overall site resiliency here. Sweet, sweet. Well, on, my, uh, on, on our side, uh, we've been, um, so I, I work on the Chaos Toolkit, if you've heard of it, uh, on Chaos Toolkit Open Source Project. And we've been busy on two fronts. First of all, we have, quite a few contributions now on, on some drivers, like on AWS, uh, more specifically and Kubernetes. So we've been busy, you know, uh, just, you know, try triaging and, and handling all the PRs and stuff like that. So it's been quite awesome to see people. The AWS driver, for instance, is mostly community driven. It's just because I don't use AWS myself these days, it's just I, I wouldn't I wouldn't presume what to test or what to fail or whatever. So it's it's awesome to see the community come in with ideas about What's the right thing to actually go and, and look for and, and, and try to break or you know or just uh, push over so it's been quite awesome on that front and on the other front i've spent quite a lot of my time uh, for the past two or three months working on the chaos sub which is project we're going to put out in september it's like a, the the ui on top of chaos toolkit so it's an open source project where it's a front you know web front end for bundling your you know, collaboration on top of, of Chaos Toolkit so you can, you know, create organization and stuff like that and, and just deal with all your efforts of Chaos Engineering through the Chaos Toolkit that way. So it's really a collaborative portal on top of the Chaos uh, Toolkit. So we, we're quite, ex you know, excited about, you know, putting it out there. Uh, it's hopefully it will uh, pick it up and, uh, and I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll be happy if you have some feedback on it at some point. <laughs> it would be brilliant. And that's about it, really. That's good. That's good to hear. We've been busy. Um, all right. Uh, I really don't want to, you know, I know it's probably early or whatever it's time it is. So I'd rather like, leave you and go ahead and enjoy your coffee than, you know, bore you with more details. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to say to the. Hey, I just had one question. So yes. you were yes. talking about the chaos toolkit, right? Yes. Um, so what is the vision for that? Is that going to be like, a, you know, like a part of the landscape where are we expecting everyone like who is just starting to, you know, start with the chaos toolkit and mm -hmm. contribute or you know, what is the vision of that? So uh, if, if you ask me, I would be pleased with that. <laughs> Being the main lead, you know, lead developer of, of the project. Uh, I have no idea what the CNCF idea is. We haven't put forward the Chaos Toolkit as a project. Uh, if, uh, you know, hopefully after the white paper is done, the group will remain and continue and, and, and figure out if there is a project that can be set as, as, a, as a proper CNCF project for Chaos Engineering. I have no idea. We would love to, you know, to push it for, uh, push it, not in a negative way, but certainly we are proud enough and we think it deserves, you know, a, a discussion around that. So, Chaos Toolkit is just an open source project. People can start there or start anywhere else, definitely. Um, I see. Okay, makes it. sense. Right. Um, 
Actually, uh, quickly, Michael, um, I don't know if I've asked or if we've asked that question before, and, and sorry for, for that, but um, I can't recall exactly what status of the various tools you've created in, you know, internally uh, in terms of being used elsewhere. They seem to be very specific to LinkedIn, you know, basically way of working. So I'm not sure. Yes, that like um, it. We've got salt modules to do like the on-host chaos engineering, which we may open source at some point in time. Um, the application level stuff, I don't really see being open sourced in saying that some of the components in the transport, uh, transport framework, which is called Restly, mm -hmm. um, those changes that were made for the chaos engineering purposes, they are an open source. Mm -hmm. um, I know Tammy tweeted them out a few months ago. Um, so some of that's there, mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm not sure how much of the magic is there that you actually need. Mm. Um, so I don't think the whole thing is going to be open sourced, but um, mm. maybe the, the host level stuff. And it's not like we're doing anything super fancy. Like if I had some time, I could probably go and contribute my own modules on the, on a, on salt, but yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Miko or Michael, I'm sorry if I don't want to make a mistake here. Uh, we were talking about, you know, what we've done on chaos engineering recently and, you know, I'd be pleased to hear your voice here if you've done anything. Yeah, it kind of skipped my turn. So I assume that we you just want to wrap up. Mm. Uh, we have been working on Powerful Seal, making it a little bit easier to use. Uh, we actually got a very gifted intern who ended up working on that. So there's a few features that are uh, currently in uh, review um, on the repo, and they're all mainly around actually making it easier for the learning curve to start to have something set up quickly on your Kubernetes cluster uh, so that you can start seeing what happens in a kind of semi-automatic mode. So there's this semi-automatic mode that uh, reads some metrics like CPU, RAM, and tries to kind of guess what might be interesting to kill, and then it kills it for you. Mm. Uh, there is a web interface that makes it easier for you to actually see what's going on there if you don't want to stare at logs in the command line. Uh, and there's some other additional filters that also make it uh, easier to kill the different pods. Uh, oh yeah, and an interactive mode that you can deploy that if you don't have like command line access to your cluster or you don't want to give to someone else. Uh, there is also a UI kind of interactive mode that shows uh, what you can kill and you can kind of click and select and filter and see what happens there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, and we based it my, mostly of the experience that we had when we were kind of giving the tool to the other teams in the company and they were struggling a little bit at the beginning to come up with good policies on what to destroy and why and mm -hmm. how. And um, yeah, so this kind of learning curve is the biggest uh, um, topic right now. Mm. That, that, that's interesting because um, it seems to me that um, most a lot of companies are building their own you know tools to do that uh, now there are various you know ways you know reasons probably because they started quite a while ago and there was nothing else or maybe because they have specific needs that no other tools can provide um but i i wonder how we're going to settle that um not not necessarily i'm not talking from a business perspective you know even from a standard way of doing things. Uh, I wonder if chaos engineering can actually standardize. I would love if we could find something to standardize on, like uh, even even like reportings. Like uh, sometimes I wonder if we could, for example, even create events using like cloud events just to say, well, this is happening, this is happening, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, I find that interesting that for now, we're very much in a stage where, you know, we're all trying on our own way. <laughs> And yeah. it's, quite, it's quite interesting to see and, and, and wonder where it's going to settle, whether or not, like, for example, you, you're mentioning things that are basically sort of an intelligence, you know, looking at the state and making decisions. And uh, with the Chaos Toolkit, we've been more, well, you, it's more like almost like a test driven in a sense where you write something state, static and it just 
hammer the system that way and, and, and that's yeah. it. So, yeah, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, on, on the way you see the... No, I understand where you're coming from. I think that, you know, on one hand, it's uh, very tempting to try to settle for one standard, but usually what happens is that you have 10 standards, then you try to settle for one and you have 11 standards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also the CNCF approach, I think, is quite nice in the fact that they don't try to choose one technology or one particular tool over others. Uh, they kind of serve the different ones. Uh, that are potentially competing and serve slightly different use cases. So I think that, you know, realistically, we'll just have to kind of see how this all evolves and where it goes and probably merge some things later on. Yes. That's my thinking at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also see the fact that people are, are there are you, you have people like you you folks uh doing doing it already and then there are many people who are not even at stage of uh resiliency in their mind or in their design so <laughs> there's such a stretch all right um uh, it's exciting times yeah. all right um well if if that's all from any you know any of you i'm happy to just stop the call and uh, get it short ready all right cool thanks for that all right. Thank Have you. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.